Um, yeah, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to my short presentation about uh, Visop, tool for visibility-based analysis. Uh, I'm Christoph Opper from the University of uh, Innsbruck, and I'm teaching at the um, Institute for Experimental Architecture. Um, well, since I'm um, notoriously over time in the presentation, I thought it might be a good idea to start in the middle of the paper. So I'll start with a very brief overview of what WISAP can do. Uh, then I'll talk a bit about what it is and how it has been implemented. And um, then, well, the, the obvious question, um, why to bother with the, with the new tool? And why I think uh, WISOP is different, which I'll try to point out in, in some examples and studies. And hopefully, if I have still enough time, I would like to talk a bit about the theoretical framework and how WISOP is uh, generally built. So what can WISOP do? Um, basically, WISOP is a visibility-based analysis tool which focuses on um, analyzing and exploring the relationship between um, spatial properties and human experience. So it's mainly concerned with uh, the rather small scale. It's not concerned with, with urban scale. And um, it provides two-dimensional and three-dimensional visibility-based analysis with high precision and performance. And to do so, it combines um, geometric, topological, and image-based methods. Um, well, of course, it can compute um, axial line maps. It can uh, generate spatial partitions based on uh, Peponis definitions of uh, S and E spaces. It can generate a sufficient set of points and isovists of the space, so it's very much related to the art gallery problem. Uh, it can simulate and analyze a number of different uh, movement patterns based on agent-based models and various measures. But the, the, the focus and the core functionality of WISOP is, however, on the, on the two- and three-dimensional isovist and visibility graph analysis. Um, additionally, it um, also provides the generation of uh, spherical panorama images as an, um, some, somewhat an alternative representation of three-dimensional space. So what is it? Um, basically, WISAP is a framework of tools which is currently under development, so it's, it's not a finished piece of, pro of, of, of piece of software, but rather um, a work in progress. Uh, it has mainly developed as a set of custom modules within the uh, 3D software package side of Houdini. So for those of you not knowing Houdini, this is a, the 3D modeling animation and simulation package mainly used in visual effects, but um, it's uh, more and more been used in the, in the field of architecture, as, especially at the, the uh, university. So the, the obvious and, and legitimate question is, of course, why developing a new visibility analysis tool when already several exist? So, well, WISOP is not entirely new. Um, I've started to work on it about six years ago. So um, at that time, it was purely grounded in the architectural design work I did in the office. So. Um, one important aspect was to bring space syntax methodologies closer to the, architect to the architectural design practice, especially in the early design phase. At the same time, it was important to develop a tool which is not a closed system, but open and flexible enough for uh, testing and prototyping ideas. So the typical workflow in visibility analysis is, is like this. Um, after modeling, geometry gets imported in the software. It gets processed, analyzed, then exported, modified, imported again, and so on and so forth. So um, it's constantly importing and exporting of data and geometry between different software tools. Um, and one of the main goals was then to skip the import and export part, so to do as much as possible in the same software environment. Um, so the key aspects in the development of this sub have been um, to keep all processing steps within the same software environment. 
a three-dimensional representation of space, high um, accuracy and performance, flexibility in terms of customization, which was very important, and the ability of uh, interactive geometry modification, um, which is at least should be illustrated in the animation, which is which doesn't play, not so important. Um, so, well, basically, when we when we break it down, the core requirements are a fast ray casting for visibility calculation, um, data evaluation, and manipulation, and uh, data visualization, and all this typically for uh, very large data sets. So all these requirements are generally met in the field of, of scientific visualization and visual effects. And this brings us back to Houdini, which is used extensively in both fields. And this is also the reason why um, it has been used as platform on uh, which WISIP is built upon. So um, overall, WISIP is mostly written in VEX and OpenCL. Um, to achieve a maximum of flexibility, which was a very, very, very important part of the whole development. And only the geometry generation part is written in, uh, in C++ because we had to use uh, NVIDIA's open uh, optics library. Um, so which visibility analysis methods are supported by WISOP? So, of course, the most important one, the uh, two-dimensional ESOVIST analysis, um, so this basically supports uh, two methods. So the first one is based entirely on casting rays into the environment, which is used by many visibility analysis tools. Uh, the other one is re uh, more or less relies on the connectivity structure of the surrounding geometry and uh, is able to compute an exact representation of the visibility space. So this, again, would be an animation. So both methods have their advantage and disadvantage, but primarily it comes down to the uh, to the difference in precision and the uh, distribution of vertices. So um, for that reason, this basically combines both versions uh, into, into one. So uh, this is just a, a quick image. Um, it's a comparison showing the area difference between an, an accurate isovist representation and the approximated version. So depending on the, on the resolution, it's, uh, it's the, the difference is it's sometimes really huge. So isovist and visibility graph measures supported by WISOP. So currently, uh, WISOP provides almost around 100 isovist and visibility graph measures to the user. So many of which are well known by uh, various authors in the um, space syntax literature. But besides that, also several new measures have been developed and implemented in uh, 2D and 3D. Most of these measures relate to geometric spatial properties, since that's uh, where the focus of WISOP is. So uh, because it was important to compare and um, evaluate existing measures during the development of WISOP, many measures have been implemented in different versions. So what you can see here is, is uh, the measure of compactness proposed by different authors. And it's uh, quite interesting when you start to compare them to each other. So um, as already mentioned, flexibility has been a key aspect in the development of WISOP, so it's, it's relatively easy to implement a simple measure, a simple custom measure, like you can uh, see here. Um, it's only one single line of code, so referencing data which has already been generated by WISOP. So um, these are some of the custom measures, but I'm not going um, too much into detail because of the time constraint. But this one is uh, symmetry, which is an important feature of uh, architectural space. Um, and because it's related to the well, ex experience and the static of space, it has been implemented in, uh, in WISOP. Um, that's a similar measure. It's, it's a similarity measure. Um, and it, it 
describes the shape similarity or rather the difference between an isovist and isovists in its neighborhood. So in other words, it, it, it measures the amount of visual change when, when you move from one space to another. So it is a relational measure and uh, it's based on the shape-based um, descriptor by belonging. Um, boundary similarity is, is a local measure and is calculated only on solid edges, so the red ones. Um, basically, this is a measure for how similar visible surrounding space, or visible surrounding walls are in terms of their geometry. Um, then we have predictability or surprise, which is a, a which basically describes the visible space from the point in the visible neighborhood based on the expectation from the vantage point. So uh, to be more precisely, it's based on the environment as it's seen from the vantage point. Uh, visual stability um, measures the stability when you move from one space to another. Um, then we have boundary collinearity, visual elongation, junctionness, and several other measures, and uh, here, these are some rather esoteric measures, which I'm going to skip. So the, the, another important part of the three-dimensional isovist, uh, which is very similar to its two-dimensional counterpart, insofar as uh, VISOP also provides two different versions. Again, one version is an exact representation of space, and the, the other one is an approximation. Um, VISOP also supports the generation of a three-dimensional visibility graph, which works exactly in the same way as it does in two dimensions. So it's, it's basically it's only points uh, which, which are either visible or not, or visible to each other. So um, what's maybe important to note is that VISOP has the option to use two point sets, which can have a different distribution and density of points. So therefore, it's possible to use a very dense, high-resolution point set as vantage locations, but use uh, considerably less points for calculation, uh, for calculating the intervisibilities like, uh, like it's done in this example. So it's, it's uh, the image in the middle is a good example to illustrate the number of calculations WISOP can perform in a rather short time. So the to check uh, visibilities, it had to compute around 2 billion rays, which took less than uh, 3 seconds on my laptop. So, isovist and visibility graphs are great, but they don't take visual properties such as light, color, and so on into account, which is uh, a fundamentally factor in, in the perception of architectural space. So, one possible way to circumvent this problem is to utilize spherical panorama images which computationally are very similar to three-dimensional isovists, except the representation of space is very different. So a big advantage is that three-dimensional data or information is encoded in a two-dimensional image, which is um, on one hand relatively easy to understand and interpret by people, and on the other hand we can rely on methods from computer vision to support visibility analysis in, in many different ways. So what can we do with all this? Um, this is a study, rather a, a, a proof of concept to demonstrate the potential of WISOP due to its open framework of tools. Uh, it's, it's mostly about how visual properties such as light and color could be integrated. Um, and it's also further supplemented by a saliency detection model from computer vision. So, uh, in, in the first step, a simple 3D model was used for rendering and calculating the lighting um, of the surface. So this information was then baked into a texture map by using a custom lens shader in Houdini's uh, integrated render engine. Um, this pre-baked texture was then used to look up the color lighting and depth information based on the texture coordinates as the ray intersection. Um, at the, the ray intersection while generating the, the panorama images, which you can see on the, on the left. So uh, in the next step, the panorama images have been used to compute saliency maps, which um, basically identify visual features that are particularly eye-catching. So in, in other words, it's the main tool for identifying those regions which um, attract people's attention. 
So the problem is that panorama images are distorted at the poles and therefore they uh, had to be processed in parts. So uh, all these steps have then been repeated for 100 vintage of fewer points. And based on the saliency maps from all these points, a new texture map was generated, which finally was then used in a, in, in a simple weighting function to weight isovist measures in particular directions, which are then related to um, human attention. Um, so, and another example is ray guiding, which uh, I'm going to skip, but it's, 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 it's a very similar approach to the, to the one described before, which uh, could be used for guiding the direction and uh, distribution of rays and to, for generating the isovis. So um, rays can also simply be weighted horizontally, for example, since the horizontal and vertical dimension is typically perceived differently. So, and another example is on the right, which is a three-dimensional isovist and should be an animation, uh, where um, the isovist gets refined in specific directions when, um, to, to, to compensate regions which are farther away. So, uh, how WISOP works, uh, so not the conceptual and methodological framework. So generally, there are two main approaches in visibility analysis, um, isovists and visibility graph uh, analysis. So whereas visibility graphs are based on topological measures and global properties, and uh, isovists are geometry-based and describing mostly um, local properties. So c conceptually, they are fundamentally different. Um, so this is just an, an overview between of, of differences between the two sorts of, of visibility analysis tools. I'm going to skip this. But um, one important distinction between isovists and visibility graph is uh, that the visibility graph is uh, conceptually and mathematically, it's, it's, um, it's a continuous approach, whereas um, a visibility graph is inherently uh, discrete. So practically this distinction is mostly neglectable, but um, on the but on the conceptual level uh, there's a big difference, especially when we put it into the context of uh, Gibson's theory of ecological perception, which uh, is the theoretical background of this, uh, but um, I'm not going to, to talk about this because it's outside of the time constraint, and it's, it's a huge and wide and also very dangerous field for all kinds of discussions. So I'm going to skip this one. So to, to cut it short, the, the, the focus of WISOP is on the isovist and to use geometric properties as, as much as possible. So. Visibility graphs are only then used if a ge or when a geometric uh, approach is uh, not possible or at least not feasible. So to do so, we relies on the concept of uh, a relational isovist, which in turn is based on the concept of overlapping isovists by Sophia Psara. Um, however, to substitute any topological operation, um, WISOP uses uh, a purely geometric approach based on sub-isovists. So basically these are isovists computed within an isovist by interpreting its boundaries and new environments. So it's, this again should be an, an animation which is showing the computation, but it seems it's not, it's not working. So um, again, and should be an animation. So generally isovists, um, I try to, to, to um, replace all topological operations based on sub-isovists as, as much as possible. Animation, you might have to clean all the animation which helps with the mouse. Yeah, I, I tried it several times. It's, 
Hmm. Well, um, it, this is just a, a, a short example how it's um, how it's measured um, because the um, the uh, clustering coefficient is typically cal calculated on the visibility graph, but it could also be computed geometrically by using sub -asoists. And um, we can s unfortunately don't see it because it, it's an animation. So uh, one of the practical advantages beside all the theoretical background is that um, a geometric approach is independent from the distribution of vantage points. So in other words, it, it works perfectly fine with an irregular distribution, which WSOP also uses since it provides the possibility to locally refine the uh, input point set. Um, based on various, various uh, measures and, and, and thresholds. So this also works when you have to fine-tune or to, to find a very fine uh, granularity on, on shapes like, like this. So uh, conclusions, limitations, um, I know I'm running out of time, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to skip this. Um, these are the... the most important references and well I say a big thank you for all the patience. Thank you, thank you Christoph for this very thorough presentation. I'm sorry for that image. No problem. Maybe we will do the debate if you can give your life to can ask animations. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the last slide was the most important. Yeah, you can include that. Yeah. We can put that in part for a second. I think that's the that one. That one? Yeah, the conclusion. This is, this is probably the most important. Yeah, yeah, I know. It would spend like 10 seconds for you to say. So, uh, well, it's uh, the most important things are already written down. So. Um, one key important thing was that um, was uh, flexibility in the development. So, um, one important thing I would like to do is to uh, replace all the C++ work so that it's it's done in uh, in Wex, which is Houdini's internal um, scripting language or expression language. Then uh, I would like to make uh, 3D generation. Or the 3D, the exact 3D generation from the ISO is faster, way faster, because right now it's, it, it works fine, but it's not fast enough. I mean, casting rays is very fast because it's using uh, OpenGL and uh, also the GPU, but um, computing all the intersections for an exact representation takes some time, which is not feasible for hundreds of thousands of points. Uh, many of the measures uh, needs to be evaluated because I thought they might be interesting and they might do something, but I can't prove it at the moment. But that has to be um, evaluated in, in further research. And uh, basically, that's what I would like to do over the next period of time when I work on it. <laughs>